Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects, Part 17. In Andrew's Workshop, with his latest creation, Still Under Wraps, an introduction to using a DRO digital readout. I haven't seen my friend Andrew for a while because he really has been busy. He's making one of these. It's a Stuart triple expansion engine, and this is only one small part of it. He brought these to show me a few months ago. In this video, I will be not showing the current state of the engine that Andrew's building. Instead, I'm showing you this. It is a Stuart triple expansion engine that I rebuilt a while ago. Andrew's engine has been made from the ground up. It's not a rebuild. And it's really something I would not like to do, building one of these from the beginning. Over now to the live audio in Andrew's workshop. Take a look at this. On the bench is something that looks like a cross between a Christmas pudding or maybe a mountain range for a model railway. So what is it, Andrew? This is the 95% finished Stuart triple compound. And you built this from scratch? I built it from the castings, yes. Tell us a bit about it. It was six months of my life, really. It's worked out quite nicely. She's still a little bit uh, on the tight side, but uh, had a running a few days ago, and uh, it will run. Andrew is now going to give you a sneak preview of this thing of wonder under the towel. That's enough. If you want to see more, you will have to watch Andrew's channel, which is called Model Engineering Adventures. What's it called, Andrew? Model Engineering Adventures. You said it perfectly. No chassis in it, though. I have difficulty saying the word chassis, as I explained in a recent video. Chassis is easy, but Andrew has given me so much grief about this, I'm going to say it properly now. Can you say exhibition? Exhibition. But that's not an S, it's an X. No, I just wanted you to say exhibition, really. Anyway, enough of this. Andrew's channel is called Model Engineering Adventures. This is what he makes, the thing that you see on the table. But I really can't preempt it on my channel. You'll have to watch Andrew's channel called Model Engineering Adventures and follow him a little bit to watch it. On YouTube, it doesn't cost anything. And if you like machining, it's really good. If you don't like machining, I wouldn't bother. There's a full playlist on the channel which is called Model Engineering Adventures. Is that enough plugs for the channel? It is, but it's also called Titanic Stuart Triple Compound is the playlist. You got all the words in there? Yes. Does it work? Yes. This is Andrew's Warco WM18B milling machine and compared to mine, it's a lot better. Mine's very old, I'm very old, my milling machine works and I'm still working even though I'm very old, but such is life. What's good about this milling machine, Andrew? This milling machine is affordable for the hobbyist. You can do almost anything you, you could do on a very expensive or a very fancy bridge port. Obviously bridge ports, most of them are on three phase. This machine can do Anything a bridge port can do. Yes, its rigidity is probably not as good as a bridge port would be, but generally speaking, when we're making the sort of stuff we're making, you don't have such heavy cuts that you would be having in an industrial sort of field. Like my milling machine, this is also a drilling machine, which is quite useful because I have a drilling machine next to my milling machine even though my milling machine is also a drilling machine, I don't use it as a drill very often. Diameter 25, enter, number of holes 6, enter, start angle, don't matter, don't matter. There you go. Andrew is just demonstrating the DRO, digital readout, and it occurs to me that this milling machine will do quite a lot more than mine will, for instance, it's selected one of the patterns that shows six holes. So will the machine automatically move to drill those? No. All oh, right, so it's not that good then. What a DRO does is it makes any rubbish milling machine brilliant. You can have as much backlash on your machine and the machine will still do what you want it to do. 
What I don't like about this machine is the sheer amount of numerical data. Sadly, numbers are not really my thing. I'm okay with words other than the word chassis, but um, I don't know. I'll let Andrew demonstrate it. For instance, the first hole. So this can be anywhere, but you can bring it down. Drill your hole and it's in the right place. Don't look at any dials, nothing. Here you can see the chuck is in the right place. So the plan would be you drill a hole at this point. The DRO confirms, because everything's set to zero, that if you drill a hole it will be where the one is lit up on the right hand side in the middle. Now it's time to drill the second hole and what you have to do is just re-centralise all the controls to zero and this will mean that the milling machine, or now a drilling machine as it is, will drill a hole precisely in the right place. Do you not have to use centre drills then for this? Yes, I generally use centre drills. What's this called Andrew? Short drill. Short and stubby and fat drill. But you can get them in all different sizes, can't you? Yeah. Just watching this simple demonstration to show some advantages. I would use a rotary table and turn the dial on the rotary table to rotate the path to the next place where I needed a hole. But this is simpler because, well, you don't need a rotary table. No. Having said that, Andrew has a rotary table with a jig on the top of it. Let me show you this. Can you show me the thing with the machine vice again? Before I put it on, I've milled out exactly vertical lines and horizontal lines to fit in the centre line of the rotary table. I was making a drag link on this and obviously you have to have two holes and also machine the outer boss on them. So because I needed six of them this was used and then simply slid across and then I could do the next link. This is called a sacrificial plate on a rotary table. So you can drill holes in it, you can mark it and you can skim it off any time. But you're not drilling into the... What a good idea. I've never really thought of doing that. I drill holes in my uh, rotary table. But making one of these is a good idea. Most of the jobs I do on a rotary table involve the chuck that's permanently fitted to it. Because I tend to do a lot of things freehand on the milling machine, which I know is not good engineering practice, but then again, I'm not a good engineer. Time flies when you're having fun, and I looked at one of the two clocks in Andrew's workshop, which told me it was nearly five o'clock, time for tea. And that concludes this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.